Hey, what's going on, y'all? So, let's get into this. I took this test before, but now I'm going to take it while you're watching. It says it takes less than 12 minutes. Let's see. It is one of the most simplest tests I've taken. In case you haven't realized, we, we are beginning. You find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. I greatly disagree. You often get so lost in thoughts that you ignore or forget your surroundings. Uh, I've come close. <laughs> you try to respond to your emails as soon as possible and cannot stand in messy inbox. I, I should uh, I should show you my email right quick. Thousands of emails, so obviously I don't do that. You find it easy to stay relaxed and focused even when there is some pressure. I find it easy. Oh, you find it easy to stay relaxed and focused. Yeah, I agree most of the time. You do not usually initiate conversation. You do not usually initiate uh Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You rarely do something just out of sheer curiosity. Rarely do something? I disagree. I will do something out of sheer curi curi curiosity for sure. You feel nothing, nothing detrimental to my health, though, or to that would hurt other people. But other than that, yeah, I'll try something. You feel, they call me the renegade ping pong player because I won't play, I won't even try to learn the traditional way to play. I like trying new techniques. Anyway, <laughs> you feel superior to other people. I disagree. Being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Uh, that's a 50-50 that's a there. It's important to be adaptable, in my opinion. It's good to be organized, but it's important to be adaptable. You are usually highly motivated and energetic. Usually, I agree. Highly motivated and energetic. Yeah. 80% of the time. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. I disagree. There are times, depending on the subject matter, it's like, you know, I might not stop in time before someone is uh, catching feelings. Like in a discussion about sugar or parenting, certain aspects of it. You know, it ain't about... Winning a debate is about trying to get somebody to understand it from a perspective that benefits the person in which you're speaking to about the issue. And they just don't get it. And you get caught up in the passion of thinking that you're going to help that person see the light. It's not, it's not about winning the debate. It's about accomplishing a goal <laughs> of helping them be better off after the interaction. You see what I'm saying? Okay, back to the... You often feel as if you have to justify yourself to other people. Well, obviously, ever since this test has begun, I've been trying to justify my answer to you guys watching. So with that, I'm going to have to put, you often feel as if you have to justify yourself. And it's not have to, though. It's just I'm inclined to. You often feel, see, this is why me and Tess, we don't do all that good because I'm like, I can't, I, you know. I'm like look, looking through all these variables and it's like if-then-else statements and like, you know, it's just like, in what way do you mean this question? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can look at it more than one way. Your home and work environments are quite tidy. If I panned around in the room right now, your home and work environments are quite tidy. Quite tidy? No, I highly disagree. Quite tidy? No. If it would have just said tidy... I wouldn't have put highly disagree. I would have went down milder. At this rate, it's going to take us forever, right? We're not going to make the 12-minute mark. You do not mind being at the center of attention. Uh, uh, you do not mean, I mean, you do not mind being at the center of attention. Oh, I highly disagree with that. I don't like being the center of attention. You might not believe it because I'm making the videos, but uh, I would be rich right now if I wanted to be the center of attention. I promise you that. You consider yourself more practical. <laughs> I kill me. Okay. You consider yourself more practical than creative. I disagree greatly.
people can rarely upset you. Oh, rarely. People can rarely upset you. I agree. You, you, you can't. It's very hard to upset me. Your travel plans are usually well thought out. I agree a little bit. It is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings. Often difficult. I disagree. Um, you know, I, I know that I need some work. That's why I can't put 100% disagree. But for the most part, and generally speaking, let's do the 80% thing. I can relate to other people's feelings. Your mood can change very quickly. I uh, disagree. 80% again. In a discussion, truth should be more important than the other person's sensitivities. Truth should be more important. I disagree a little bit. Um, depends on the situation. Depends on the relationship of the person you're talking to. You know, it, 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 it's relative. You rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. I highly disagree. Rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. Uh, I can't say 100%. We, we go to 80% again. When I am mindful enough to do so, which is most of the time, I'm always considerate of how my actions affect other people. Sometimes, again, it's one of the things that depends on the situation. I mean, it, it depends on the situation. For instance, I might make a CD or a video that is straightforward and to the point, and I know it's going to step on some toes, but in my opinion, whoever is listening to it, um, they need to hear what needs to be said and not what makes them feel good or makes them comfortable, whoever the listener is or the viewer is. You know what I mean? So what was the question? Oh, you rarely worry about. Right. So rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. I disagree greatly that I rarely worry. Sometimes I, you know, it's like, well, you know. Your work style is closer to random energy spikes than to a methodical and organized approach. Closer to random energy spikes than a, a methodical and organized work style. Uh, I disagree a little bit. Closer to random energy. Yeah, I disagree a little bit. Uh, it's more organ, a methodical and organized than random. But it's not, it's nowhere near 80%. You know, it's more like 50-50 and leaning toward organized. You're often envious of others. No time to be envious of others. That's ridiculous. Focus on what you can do to get where others are, whatever whatever you're envious about. An interesting book or video game is often better than a social event. Interesting book or video game. I'm putting, uh, man, it all depends. You said interesting book or video game. Interesting book. To me, it's personal development. Social event, you're talking about what type of social event. If it's a birthday party, do I know the person? If I don't know the person, definitely the interesting book. Like somebody just inviting me to go party, definitely the interesting book. If it's somebody I know, and you know, then the social event, depending on what kind of event it is, then it may beat out the book. Video game, forget about it. I, I have nothing against video games. I like playing video games, but I don't play video games. When I get positioned the way I want to be positioned, then I'll play video games. I have no time for playing video games right now. You might be saying, well, you're taking this personality test right now. Well, this personality test helps you to reflect on things. And plus, I'm doing it for you guys, and I'm building up an audience based on that page uh, to connect with and communicate with. So this is a lot different than a video game, a meaningless video game. Unless you're doing a video game for a reason, you know what I mean? Other than just the video game. That's me. I'm telling you, this is where I am. That's why I answered the question the way I was. You feel you need to justify yourself to others. <laughs> ah, it's entertainment, man. Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is most is the is it or being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. I mild, mildly agree. You know, it, again, it depends on what the project is. You got all different types of projects. Some projects require you to be strict and follow a very specific plan. Others is not as important. You rarely get carried away by fantasies and ideas. Uh, I agree a little bit. Rarely. Yeah, I agree a little bit. 
Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. You often find yourself lost in thought when you're walking in nature. Well, yeah, that's my purpose for walking in nature is to get lost in thought. You know what I mean? If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start to worry if you said something wrong. I remember those days. But now, well, not absolute again. Uh, sometimes you're wondering if an advertiser, you know, whatever. You, you wonder if people, uh, are they strategizing? Have they changed their mind? Did I push the envelope too far? Is, was my negotiation too strong? You know, so sometimes you trying to fill out the other person. But for the most part, I'm like, whatever I stated, that's my piece. Uh, whatever, whatever may be, will be. As a parent, you'd rather see a child grow up kind and smart. I want a child to grow up. I'm not a parent. But I would want my child to grow up kind. I don't know about kind and smart. That's, uh, that's an interesting way of putting it. As a parent, you would rather see your child grow up kind than smart. Now they need to go. Grow up kind. <laughs> I agree. No, disagree. I disagree a little bit. Uh, disagree a little bit. Well, no. Nah. I'm going to have to agree a little bit. I agree a little bit. Kind and smart. I'm going to have to disagree a little bit. You need to be smart. And uh, if you're smart, you're going to be kind anyway. You don't... Yeah. Kind and smart. I mean, it's kind of crazy the way it's put together, but this is how I'm looking at it. If you grow up smart, then you're going to end up being kind. So that's why I answered the question like that. But if you grow up kind, it doesn't mean you can't be smart. I mean, if you grow up kind, it doesn't by default mean that you're likely to be smart. But if you grow up smart, then it does mean by default you're likely to become be or become kind. Because if you're smart, you realize, even if it's not a part of your nature, then you come to realize that being, caught, uh, being smart is beneficial to you. So you end up being smart, uh, kind. You see what I mean? You do not let other people influence your actions. Amen. You do not let other people. I agree. Uh, I agree to it. You do not let other people. Yeah, 80%. Because, you know, the more you believe that nothing influences, influences your action, the more likely it is that something can influence your actions because you are uh, not aware of the power and in outside influence. I mean, a person that can truthfully say that he's not affected by outside influence and it's accurate, that's major control, major control. And I strive to get there. I don't know if I'm there or not yet. I'm pretty sure that I'm influenced at different levels. Matter of fact, I know at times I might buy something, like a type of try a drink or something like that just because of advertisement. I'm intrigued while well, I've seen it. I'm aware of it. Um, let me see what it's like. Now, again, Another question was similar to this. I wouldn't do nothing stupid or extreme like jeopardizing health to try something. But mild things, yeah, I could be influenced a little bit. Well, it says people. but Your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events. Your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events. Dreams tend to focus... I don't even, uh, I don't even have that many dreams, but 10 to, oh, oh yeah, we do got a, we got a, we got a dead middle in the road. I didn't realize that. It does not take you much time to get, to start getting involved in social activities at your new workplace. I agree. You are more of a natural improviser than a careful planner. I agree a little bit. Your emotions control you more than you control them. I highly disagree. You enjoy going to social events that involve dress up or role play activities. I disagree. <laughs> you often spend time exploring unrealistic and impractical yet intriguing ideas. I agree. You rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. There's something about this. They keep on using this spontaneity thing, but uh, that's me. I rather improvise than spend time coming up with a deep. I, I agree a little bit. It depends on what we're talking about here. You are a relatively reserved and quiet person. Strongly agree. 
If you had a business, you would find it very difficult to fire loyal but underperforming employees. I agree a little bit. I would... Excuse me. I would give them so many chances. That's what I say anyway. That's what I think. They would have, I mean, they would have to... They would have to screw up and lead me to believe they had no desire to improve in order for me to get rid of them like that. If I know that you want to improve, I can work with you a little bit. If you will listen and take action toward improvement. Now, if you say you want to improve and every suggestion I make, you don't, you disregard it and you're doing the same thing. No, you just forget about it. You got to go. It's, you often contemplate the reasons for human existence. Uh, not, not really. I have, but I already come to a conclusion on that. Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. I disagree a little bit. It's, oh, let me put it here. 50-50. It's kind of, I'm pretty sure these tests don't want you to be in the middle of the road, but that's what it is. Keep your opinions, keep your options open is more important than having a to-do list. You know, I do that sometimes. Keep your options open is more important than having a to-do list. Yeah, I do that sometimes to a certain degree. If your friend is sad about something, you are likely you are more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. You know, I'm mindful about many times that's all a person wants is emotional support and not necessarily suggestions, especially women. But I can't say I'm absolute. If your friend is sad about something, you're more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways. Yeah, I'm 50-50 in that. Um, emotional support. Yeah, I'm 50-50. I probably, yeah, I'm leaning, like, yeah, I'm leaning on the emotional support part because I'm becoming more and more aware of that and leaning on the emotional support part. I still, I'm a problem solver by nature, and that's what I want to do, solve problems and fix it. So sometimes I even had to catch myself on doing that and be like, wait, they, they probably don't want me to go there with it. They probably just want some emotional support. So. Yeah, I'm more so on that side, but not far from in the middle. You rarely feel insecure. Rarely feel insecure. I mostly agree. Rarely feel insecure. Yeah, I mostly agree. Every now and then, you know, we have these things that come up. You you have no difficulties coming up with a personal timetable and sticking to it. No difficulties. I agree a little bit. I ain't gonna, yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm working on getting better at that. I can come up with a timetable. I will put it right here. We, we are 80%. Have no difficulties coming up with a personal timetable and sticking to it. We are 80%. Being right is more important than being cooperative when it comes to teamwork. That's that's not teamwork. <laughs> that's not teamwork. We put that in the middle. Actually, no. I disagree. You got to give and take in that. Because it's not even an issue or right. You, you, you're talking about perspective. Things are not always right and wrong. There's different ways of doing Many things, there's different ways and a different approach of doing it. It's just your perspective. So to try to prove that your way is the right way um, and, you, and it's teamwork, you can't do that. We got to put that right here. You think that everyone's views should be respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not. You think that everyone's views should be respected? Yeah, uh, a little bit. And, uh, it depends on what you're talking about, what those views are. You feel more energetic about spending time with a group of people. You feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. Yeah. You frequently misplace your things. No, uh, I disagree. Only a little. <laughs> um, I'm getting better with my keys intentionally putting them in the same place 80% of the time. A paper might get missing every now and then. You frequently misplace. Yeah, I disagree a little bit. I, you got to get rid of this word frequently. You see yourself as very emotionally stable. Strongly agree. Your mind is always buzzing with unexplored. Strongly agree. You will not call yourself a dreamer. Strongly disagree. You usually find it difficult to relax when in front of many people. You usually find it difficult in front of many people. I agree a little bit. Usually find it difficult to relax when when talking in front of many people. Yeah, I agree a little bit. It used to be right here, but
But now it's agree a little bit. Depend on what we're talking about, who the people are, you know, what's going on. I don't like talking on the telephone in front of people, no matter who it's to. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's just like personal. Generally speaking, you rely more on your personal, I mean, <laughs> generally speaking, you rely more on your experience than your imagination. We're going to put it right there. Uh, imagination is big to me. Creativity is big to me. But I got a lot of experience in different things. And even if it's not directly related to whether, whatever it is I'm, I'm contemplating or I'm thinking about, I draw from past experience uh, and try to connect the dots in a way to develop ideas about it. You worry too much about what other people think. I do that a little bit. Worry too much. Wait, that says agree. Let me, I got to go back. That's going to have to be. You can't go back? Oh, this is the last one, too. You can't go back? Okay. If the room is full, you stay closer to the walls. Avoid in the center. Uh, I ain't going to say that. I'm, a, I, I'm an explorer. I'll do something just, you know. You have a tendency to procrastinate until there is not enough time to do everything. I strongly disagree. You feel very anxious in stressful situations. I strongly disagree. You believe that it is more rewarding to be liked by others than to be powerful. Uh, more rewarding to be like, yeah, I say I agree a little bit. Powerful. That's an interesting statement. I'm going to have to put it here, 50-50. More rewarding to be like. I'm going to say I, I probably lean on the side of being like than powerful. That's probably not a good thing, but I think that's where I am. You have always been uninterested. Yeah, I be seeing stuff, man. You have always been interested in unconventional and ambiguous things. For example, books, arts, movies. Yeah, interested in, I would say so. You often take initiative in social situations. Uh, between these two, often take initiative in social situations. I'm gonna say eighty. I'm gonna say eighty percent. Let's see the results, y'all. Let's see the results. I think this is different than before. Campaigner. It is different than before. Campaigner. Extra extroverted. Get out of here. Intuitive. I know that's true. I think that's true anyway. Nature. Feeling overthinking. By that degree? Prospecting. Over judging. Assertive. Oh, it was assertive last time. I'm surprised that it's that much on the assertive part. But there you go, you guys. So let me know what yours is. If you take your personality type, your personality test, let me know what yours is. Mine is ENFPA. ENFPA. Extroverted, leaning. That's uh, something went wrong there. Cause <laughs> I mean, I know I'm growing, but I wouldn't say I'm more on the extroverted side than introverted side. But whatever. Those of you that know me know that I tend to disregard labels and titles for the sake of communication and, you know, interacting is useful, but I don't take it to heart so much because I think we get caught up in those labels and titles uh, too deeply. What do you mean life is boring? Are we living on the same planet? Oh, y'all, if you've been to the blog, you know I wrote a book called um, what to do when you're bored. And some of y'all know what my motto is, boring people get bored. Look what it says here. What do you mean life is boring? Are we living on the same planet? For real, man. I mean, like, how can you get bored? How can you even be bored, man? I don't understand how you can be bored. But, you know, again, different perspectives. So let's see what this means. Start the reading. Oh, the campaign of personality is a true free spirit. They're often the life of the party. And a little bit. But unlike... Types in the Explorer Road Group campaigners are less interested in the sheer excitement and pleasure of the moment than they are in enjoying the social and emotional connections they make with others. Charming, independent, energetic, and compassionate. Yeah. The 7% of the population that they comprise, we only 7%, can certainly be felt in any crowd. I don't know about that. You can change the world with... Wow, this is true. Yeah. This is true. You can change the world with just an idea. 
more than the social, more than just sociable peer, people pleasers, though. Campaigners like all their diplomat cousins are shaped by their intuitive quality, allowing them to read between the lines with curiosity and energy. They tend to see life as a big, complex puzzle where everything is connected. True. But unlike analysts, personality types with tendency that puzzles as a series of systematic ma machinations. I never heard that. Campaigners see it through a prism of emotion, compassion, and mysticism, and are always looking for a deeper meaning. True, true, true. Campaigners are fiercely independent, true, and much more than st stability and security, they crave. Cr it does it say anything about reading here? <laughs> campaigners, campaigners are fiercely independent and much more than stability and security, they crave creativity and freedom. True, 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 true. Many other types are likely to find these qualities irresistible, and if they find a cause that sparks their imaginations, campaigners will bring an energy that oftentimes thrusts them into the spotlight, held up by their peers as leaders in the guru. But this isn't always where the independence loving campaigners want to be. True, true, true. Worse, still, if they find themselves beset by the administrative tasks and routine maintenance that can accompany a leadership position. Still, if they find themselves beset by the administrative tasks and routine maintenance that can accompany a leadership position. I just put out an ad in Craigslist for a sales team and an administrative assistant because I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I'm telling y'all to take this test, man. It's, the thing is, uh, these things are accurate to a great degree, man. Campaigners' self-esteem is dependent on their ability to come up with original solutions, and they need to know that they have the freedom to be innovative. They can quickly lose patience or become dejected if they get trapped in a boring role. I don't see it as boring, but if you talk about clothes and uh, little opportunity for growth and expressing your opinion and your ideas being taken seriously, that's true. I was on a squad for problem solving at a job, and uh, they didn't want to take suggestions about certain things, like doing something about the culture and the environment so that the employees felt more connected to the job than more than just a machine there creating revenue for the company but part of a team that made a difference to the people at the company you know what i'm saying they want to know that people care about it. but that was where i went to with my suggestion on how to improve things what am i talking about anyway don't lose that little spark of madness luckily campaigners know how to relax and they are perfectly capable of switching from a passionate driven idealist in the workplace to that imaginative and enthu enthusiastic free spirit on the dance floor. And you're a little off there. I used to dance, but maybe if I went to the club more, I would dance when I don't, I have, I don't know when the last time I went to a club. Often with the suddenness that can surprise even their closest friends. Suddenness. Being in, the, being in the mix also gives them a chance to connect emotionally with others, giving them cherished insight into what motivates their friends and colleagues. They believe that everyone should take the time to recognize and express their feelings and their empathy and sociability. Make that a natural conversation topic. All right, that's all I'm going to read. Uh, campaigners you may know. Robert Downey, Will Smith, Robin Williams, Drew Barrymore. Let's see a few more. Russell Brand, Quentin Tarantino, Meg Ryan, Kelly Clarkson, Michael Scott, Phil Dunney, Duffany, Duff, I don't know who that is. Modern Family. Okay, interesting. Piper Chapman. I don't know who these people are because I don't watch television. Uh, Hobbin Washburn, Peter Millard. Jennifer Keller, Carrie Bradshaw, Willy Wonka. Mm, that's the only name I know. Well, I mean, there was another one. Uh, I know Kelly, Meg. Uh, almost no Quentin. Russell Brand. I think I know who that is, too. Robin Williams. Uh, of course, I know who Will Smith is. I know who Robert Downey Jr. is. Jr. is. Strengths and weaknesses. I said I was going to be finished, but I got to go into this. The campaigner. People mastery. Really. Curious. Observant. Energetic and enthusiastic. Energetic and enthusiastic. Excellent communicators. I don't know about excellent. Know how to relax. I know how to relax. Very popular and friendly. I'm friendly. And a little popular. Campaigner weakness. Poor practical skills. Find it difficult to focus. I definitely find it difficult to focus. Overthink things. <laughs> what y'all think about that? <laughs> the campaigners don't take things at face value. They look for underlying motives in even the simplest things. It's not uncommon for campaigners to lose a bit of sleep asking themselves why someone did what they did, why it might, what it might mean, and what to do about it. 
I used to do the why. I used to be, even with driving, I used to be puzzled, like trying to understand why a person would do the things that they do. I tell you something right now, and it's still, when well, nah, I'm over it finally. But the last thing that puzzled me, uh, that used to get to me, is, I mean, it still gets to me a little bit, but not the way like it used to, is not using the turn signal. That's ridiculous to me. It's so easy. And everybody has been in a situation where someone not using it has caused you an inconvenience. Pulling out of a busy driveway, you you want to make, well, whatever. You might want to make a left or a right. But cars come in all the time, and then they turn as soon as they get to you, which means that you could have pulled out, but you was being courteous and not pulling out in front of them just to find out that they was being they were not being courteous and, and, and considerate, and they actually turning. It's ridiculous, man. And as you see, I'm getting worked up, right? Okay. Anyway, but it makes sense, though. It's not. You, just, you see what I mean? It's, it's, but I used to try to figure out what does this say about that person? What does it say about you if that's you? Think about, you need to, you, I no longer try to figure it out, but you really do need to try to figure it out. You, you need to think about that. What does that say about you that something so simple you fail to do? And knowing that if you were in the other position, it would piss you off. Think about that. I no longer worry about it. <laughs> I might still get pissed off at you. But I don't try to get in your head no more. Get stressed easily. I don't get stressed easily. All this overthinking isn't just for, the own, for their own benefit. Campaigners, especially turbulent ones, are very sensitive and care deeply about others' feelings. A consequence of their popularity is that others often look to them for guidance and help, which takes time and it's easy to see why campaigners sometimes get overwhelmed. I mean, it's true. Easily, especially when they can't say yes to every request. I've learned a lot about saying no uh, I still haven't mastered it, but yeah. Highly emotional. While emotional expression is healthy and natural with campaigners even viewing it as a core part of their identity, it can come out strongly enough to cause problems for this personality type, particularly when under stress, criticism, or conflict. Campaigners can experience emotional bursts that are counterproductive at best. That used to be me. Independent to a fault, campaigners loathe being micromanaging, restrained, by heavy-handed rules. They want to be seen as highly independent masters of their own face, even possessors of an altruistic wisdom that goes beyond dr draconian law. The challenge for campaigners is that they live in a world of checks and balances, a pill they are not happy to swallow. Romantic relationships. So shall we go into that? When it comes to relationships, there's hardly anyone around who is more excited than the campaigners to share with their partners the bounty of ideas and eye-opening experiences that life has to offer. For people with campaigning personalities, Type relationships are a joyous process of mutual exploration and imagination, a chance to connect with another soul. Campaigners take their relationships seriously and are known for their uninhibited and unshakable devotion to people with whom they've committed their hearts. To whom they've committed their hearts. Campaigners have the advantage of irresistible charm when it comes to attracting a partner. Really? Campaigners' warmth, excitement, and passion are simply alluring. Ah, oh, interesting. In the dating phase, if a campaigner can be said to tolerate such a formal process to begin with, they will show these qualities by showering their new flames with affection and will do everything they can do to build a strong relationship by demonstrating their devotion and reliability by whatever means available. Yeah, except for uh, women these days don't necessarily appreciate that. Appreciate that, you know what I mean? Don't y'all yell at me. It's true for a lot of women. It used to be anyway. I don't know. I hadn't been out there on the dating scene for over five years, so... I don't know what's changed, but that's part of the reason why I haven't been. With things being the way that they were when I was dating, I'm like, forget this. I don't have time for this. I'd rather focus on me doing what I need to do to position myself as I want to be positioned. And I deal with that mess later because who got time for that? You cannot live without a fire. Long distance relationships are quite common among campaigners as they view physical distance as just another idea. No match with concepts like love. Uh, I tried it, but again, with the other, the other person, it has to be on the same page. And that's not normally the case from what I've experienced. So that doesn't really work. This gives them the chance to demonstrate their commitment both by staying true despite the physical separation. I write about these things and try to encourage long-distance truck drivers in particular that they can have a great relationship if they just both understand that it's an opportunity to make it stronger. But again, you take, you got to have both people on the same page in order for, instead of allowing it to draw, uh, separate you further apart, then allow it to make you closer. And you have to have a quality of person. 
If you got somebody that's going to take the advantage of the fact that you are separated by thousands of miles and they're going to abuse that situation, meaning in their mind they say, out of sight, out of mind, I can do what they want to because what they don't know won't hurt them. Yeah, well, you got a problem. It's not going to work. You see what I mean? So we got all of this stuff here. So, yeah, the campaigner can deal with that. But it doesn't mean that the campaigner is enthusiastic about about dealing with that because the other person has to be the right type of person in order for that to actually work out. And a campaigner, according to what they're saying about campaigners, a campaigner is likely to understand that and therefore only be comfortable with that type of situation, I guess, if the other person is a campaigner or whoever is supposed to be a good match for a campaigner. I don't know who that is right now. I, I imagine that they would have as a matter of fact, I think they got matching uh, types and all of that. You probably got to pay for that, though. Campaigners go all in with their relationships, that's true. And if they fall apart despite their efforts, they, they can end up plagued with questions about why the relationship failed and what they could have done differently without a, without a boy, 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 I don't know what that is, without a boy, boy. Boy. These thoughts can crush campaign and self-esteem as they think as they sink into depression. Yeah, it used to bother me. But now I realize it's well, I ain't gonna say it's the other person. But I always I mean it's always usually been a mutual split, most cases. But at the same time, I'm I'm always just like when I got laid off, same thing. I ask for that person's um feedback on how I could have done things differently to be a better person in that relationship. So whether you're talking about a business partner, an employee, uh, relationship, uh, what do you call it? Uh, serious relationship. Um, I'm always wanting to know how I could have done things differently to be better in that relationship. To me, it's just a smart thing to do because it is a shortcut to personal growth and personal development to find out the answer to that question. But look, how long has this been going on? This is, we've been doing this for a long time. I think that's why I've been putting it off because I've been planning on doing this a long time, man. Ever since I made the post about this, but it's like you need to block the time to go through it because it's going to end up taking some time. But that's it, guys. I'm about to cut this thing off. I got work to do, real work to do, other work to do. This has been fun. And hey, I hope you take it because it's kind of cool. For some people like me, I've taken several of these and, you know, I've intentionally done work to become more aware of who I am and how I think and how I operate. And I think that's beneficial to everyone. That's why I said that it's good to take these tests. And I know for a lot of, I know for a fact that a lot of people hasn't really looked at themselves in this way and analyzed themselves and thought about how they operate, metacognition, thinking about your thinking. So this is very useful for that person because this can be the beginning of that process. And you can get a better grasp of who you are as a person, what you're made up of, what your strengths and weaknesses are. Because, I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff is, is pretty accurate in reading me. And when you think about it, I mean, I don't know how much you are if you into science and everything. And you look at the questions they're asking. You can see how it gives you a profile. I mean, you got this is police and everything use profiles. You know what I'm saying? This stuff is scientific to a degree. I don't know what these people done, but. You look at the questions and you look, ask a question from the, you can see several questions are basically the same questions from different angles. So when you have all of this data and you're doing, you know, you probably got all these algorithms going to process the data, then you can see how it comes to uh, have a certain level of accuracy just based on, because it's based, basically based on psychology and mathematics. I mean, I'm not saying it in a literal sense, but I'm saying, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not guesswork. It's not just guessing, is what I'm saying. It, there's a method. Put it like this. Similar to what Google might use to figure out how to give you the correct search results. Same difference. They're gathering data based on you, how you respond, you know, to the questions. And taking it in the big picture, crunching that data. This, in this case, this more likely means that like that. I'm still going on, man. Y'all have a good night.